You are watching today right across this great country of ours. Well, disturbing developments in the national coronavirus battle this morning with spreading clusters across Sydney's southwest have been traced back to Victoria, where Premier Daniel Andrews is facing increased pressure to explain leaked emails showing the health department knew about potential problems with hotel quarantine on the first day of the scheme. Here is how he responded yesterday. The adequacy or otherwise of arrangements put in place, that's not a matter for me to uh, determine or settle. That's a matter that should be not so much politicians sitting in judgment of themselves, uh, but an arm's length inquiry that's been set up. To discuss, I'm joined by Queensland Senator Matt Canavan and Stella Magazine's Sarah Lamarquan. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Matt, to you first of all, Premier Andrews has handballed the handling of the crisis to an inquiry. How do you think he's gone? Well, well, Carl, uh, there's more secrecy occurring in Victoria than, than China at the moment. And, uh, and now with confirmation uh, that uh, the Sydney outbreaks have come from Melbourne, we don't yet know if the coronavirus itself was made in a lab, but we know the second wave in Australia was certainly made in Melbourne. And it's a man-made disaster. It's a, it's a Dan-made disaster now for our country that we've got to respond to. Uh, we, we did it a few months ago and got rid of it, basically. And, uh, and hopefully now we, we'll just have to buckle down and do it again. So that is a brutal assessment um, from a, a senior federal politician on a state leader. Um, you're not mincing your words. You're not apologising for it. You think he's that culpable? Well, clearly, uh, right now, uh, all the facts on the table are that this outbreak uh, occurred uh, within Melbourne. Uh, we know from the chief medical officer in Victoria uh, that the virus uh, was basically eradicated from Melbourne, the virus that was there in February and March. And this new virus uh, has been imported from overseas and obviously come through the hotel route, which was uh, uh, had, a, had holes that you could drive a truck through, thanks to the ineptitude of the Victorian government. I'll come back to you in a second, Sarah. A Melbourne is looking at harder lockdowns. Now the aged care facilities, they're my biggest concern. They're the most vulnerable. Um, Bill Shorten says anyone who tests positive should be removed and taken to hospital. I know he's not a medical expert, but it seems right. It does, Carl. It's, it's so uh, devastating to hear that someone has visited an elderly relative and from there we've seen uh, everyone at that aged care facility in danger. This is the most vulnerable group, of course, in the community and I agree what, whatever action needs to be taken should be taken. Uh, but look, I, I think, you know, to what you were talking about with Daniel Andrews and the leaked emails and the questions that everyone is asking about the bungled quarantine hotel situation, I mean, I think, Matt, we've just got to be a bit careful. There is an inquiry starting next Monday. And what's the point of uh, holding that inquiry if we're going to completely preempt the outcome already? But see, Sarah, I think, I think you've got to know what, what went wrong in order to fix it and move on. And I don't think you have to have an inquiry here in order to find out what went They know exactly what went wrong. They say they've fixed it. So let's just deal with it and then move on. I agree with moving on 100%. Uh, Matt, each state has a different position now in terms of how they're handling this crisis. The National Cabinet is facing serious questions over its lack of consistency with handling the virus, specifically each government disagreeing on what living with COVID looks like. You've just had on national TV absolutely given it to Dan Andrews. That is another point. It's, it's another example of how fractious the relationship is. Well, well, Carl, we've got to be upfront with uh, with people as well. We can't hide behind uh, a no criticism uh, uh, blanket because that would mean worse outcomes. Uh, and there are going to be disagreements from time to time. But all things considered, governments have worked well here in Australia. I do fear now, though, this talk that. Uh, somehow we can eradicate the disease is giving false hope to people. Yeah. We've never been promised that. Uh, we've, got to, we've got to learn to respond in a targeted way that doesn't shut down the whole economy uh, when outbreaks occur like they have in Melbourne. And I hope common sense can prevail there because I just don't think there's a pathway seemingly to get rid of it completely. And, and without destroying businesses, the, the shutdown is really interesting. It's such a dilemma for, uh, for New South Wales at the moment. And uh, the Gladys Berejiklian, Sarah, has, has some huge decisions to make, but she says she's not going to shut down um, the business like they have in Victoria. Do you think that's right? 
Well, I think it's interesting that she's well, downplaying talk, Carl, of another lockdown because uh, all of our leaders are feeling their way through this. And uh, I mean, as a resident of New South Wales, I do fear that she might come to regret that prediction. Mm. I certainly hope that she's right. I'm sure I speak for everyone and certainly for businesses. I think what's interesting here, Carl, I was thinking this morning we first started talking about this back in April, about a month or two after this had become what was clearly a global pandemic that had arrived on our doorstep. And we had had a conversation about the economy or human lives. I mean, what comes first? And, and the problem is, of course, that the two are intertwined. Mm. And if we do uh, take really draconian measures, obviously we'd save lives, which we all agree is, is critical. But if we do completely cripple the economy, then we're not going to be in a position to uh, keep our health services uh, yeah. afoot. So it, it is the two, are unfortunately, economy and um, decision that save lives are really codependent. We just have to live with it, don't we? Um, but we have to, I think we need um, greater transparency in what that looks like. And I know that's constantly evolving. Finally, on a much lighter note, depending on the way you view th these things, um, nature lovers, some things will never sway them. Like this shark lover attacked in Cairns on Shark Appreciation Day, filming a shark documentary who had this to say on her way into hospital. I still love sharks. Sharks are beautiful. Magnificent stuff. Uh, it's since, <laughs> since been revealed that victim Annika Craney lost her home in the summer bushfires. Now, you wouldn't have guessed by her moves. She's uh, just in terrific form that she was attacked by a shark. Matt, do you think it's time now to rid the ocean of all sharks? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I don't, Carl. It's a, I'll uh, make a I wasn't decision. quite expecting that segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, Suppression yeah, just be up front, hey? yeah, take, Get off the fence. <laughs> look, uh, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, look, my, my, my uh, all, all thoughts go out to that, that, uh, the tragedy there for that individual, especially mm. what a tough year losing a house mm. as, as well this year. Uh, and good honour for, for being passionate about sharks. Look, I do, though, think we need much better shark control measures in North Queensland. Yep. Uh, all the nets were pulled out last year by the Queensland Government because some greenies took a court case. Uh, I'm all for protecting sharks, but we've got to protect humans as well. OK, and Sarah, just finally, quickly. Oh, Carl, Matt, there's so much there I could say. But let me just say, when Carl said that that was light news, I think that really sums up 2020, doesn't <laughs> it? You know, it's a pretty bad day when someone being attacked by a shark is the happy news. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't judge. The light it's relief. It's been one of those kind of years, and she's OK, very happy, very happy. And, and just before Peter takes me off air, I do love sharks. Um, thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Ahead on today.